What is up guys, Johnny here. Today we'll look at the Radiant Phalong, aka the Jade Dragon. The Jade Dragon is super easy to get. All you need to do is recruit 4 friends in the game and you will have this creature for free. However, it is not farmable, so you will need epic green essence in order to fully awaken this creature. One of the good ways to get epic green essence is wait for the special event in the token chest, save your tokens, and when you get the green event, spend your tokens in the epic chest. You will have a pretty good chance of getting some epic green essences. The Jade Dragon does not have to be fully awakened to be good. I recommend going for at least the 7 awakening. You're gonna get 50% resistance to all debuffs on awakening number 1. It is very good right now because all of the stun on first floor. Then you're gonna get a max level increase. 15% HP is really needed to keep this thing alive. But look at that. This is where the J Dragon starts to shine. Another extra 10% to all the buffs at Awakening number 7. Then it is gonna make him better. If you get all the Awakenings, a little extra 5% HP, Awakening number 8, is gonna help with survivability, of course. And the last Awakening is just gonna give some AoE heal, and it needs to be already activated to heal the team. So it is just a little extra, it makes him better, but you don't absolutely need it. If you have other sources of healing in your team, plus you already have the man buff anyways. So. Yeah, if you can get to Awakening number 7, definitely you can start using the Jade Dragon. The team I'm using right now is built around the Jade Dragon. The whole goal of this build is to funnel mana into the Jade Dragon in order to activate its special ability on turn 2. This build is really good right now. It got me top 10 in gold tier on the past 2 weeks, including the red week. Now let's look into the build. With the Jade Dragon, you want to activate a special ability as fast as possible. You want to activate on turn 2 if you're going to survive first floor. To activate a special ability, the Jade Dragon needs 130 mana points. To get 130 points on turn 1, you would actually need seven, uh, 7 green dots outside of your Jade Dragon. So 7 green dots plus the 4 green dots from the Jade Dragon, that would be 11. 11 is 110 points. Plus, you will get the Mystic Tome that will give you an extra 20%. That will be 132. Now, I recommend going for 8. You need one extra mana ball to play around mana drain enchants. Because at 132, if you get hit once, you're not activating on turn 2. With 8 green dots, you actually get 144 mana points. You can get hit twice and still be able to activate. Now once you're good with the mana, your second job is think about keeping your dragon alive. You need it to be alive in order to activate on turn 2. So two ways to keep your jade dragon alive. First way is through enchants. If you have the resource, you should spend some resource on enchanting to make your dragon better. First thing would be extra HP. I only have one silver enchant on my jade dragon by the way, and this team is doing really good right now. So extra HP definitely good. Then go for some defense. You can reroll many many times. Bronze and chance are pretty cheap. So go for high defense stats. And then if your dragon is fully awakened, uh, it's gonna heal your team with a percentage of his power. So you can go for power stats, extra power for more healing. Then second thing, guys, if you are playing J Dragon, please play a second green creature for two reasons. First reason. The second green creature will take some damage away or distract the, the red enemies and will share the damage with the jade dragon so this is increasing your chance to keep your dragon alive if it is not enough you could go and put the defender tome on your second green creature it will increase the defense and enemies will be more likely to attack your other green creature the second reason to play another green creature is like maximize the potential of your mana like if j dragon is ready to activate what are you gonna do with all the green dots you can uh, funnel mana into another creature could be a control creature could be a tank could be a dps whatever you like you don't have to play the exact same team that i'm playing but i really recommend two green creatures to yeah funnel the mana into something else so with J Dragon, I recommend at least uh, one Resurrector. Definitely, J Dragon will die very often, but it's not a problem if you can resurrect. You do not need Astral Watcher. You can play 
the black resurrector, the hunchback, with another black creature, or you could play the red resurrector with another red creature. But definitely recommending two, uh, two green creatures, one resurrector with another um, creature of the same color, and then a DPS or a stun or control creature, whatever you like. I did play many variations of this build, and I had success in the past before I had Astral Watcher. So yeah, I think that's it for now, guys. I did uh, cover pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this video. I might go uh, and do some live battles into another video and go about uh, attacking strategies, how to uh, deal with four ones. Um, but yeah, G Dragon's very, very good. It's just not a creature that you just throw randomly into a team. You need to build your team around it. Uh, it is not gonna do what it's supposed to do just randomly into a team. It needs to be the focus of, of the team. It's all about activating early, as soon as round two. And yeah, that will that will really, really help surviving floor one in PvP. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any comments, any question, make sure you leave a comment below. I always read everything. So again, thank you for watching. Make sure you watch my other Creature Quest videos. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a like. I will see you guys soon. Take care.